Amber, Nature's Time Capsule. About 30 million years ago, this tiny scorpion found trouble. It got stuck in some sticky stuff called resin. Over millions of years, that resin grew drier and harder. Finally, it turned into a material called amber. The scorpion remained perfectly preserved in a golden prison. Amber is nature's time capsule. It forms a tight seal around whatever is trapped inside, protecting it from the effects of aging. Scientists have found insects preserved in amber that come from the time of the dinosaurs. Several years ago, a scientist discovered an important amber fossil, three tiny flowers that were 90 million years old. Found in New Jersey, they are the oldest whole flowers ever seen. Because amber is beautiful, people value it for reasons other than science. For centuries, people have made jewelry and sculpture from amber. To the ancient Etruscans who lived in what is now Italy, amber was as precious as gold. But not all amber is golden. Some is white, red, or green. A dinosaur named Bambi. This big ball of dirt rolled over and I saw black bones in it, recalls Wes Linster describing his astonishing discovery in 1994 at age 14. Linster was digging on a ranch near Choto, Montana, when he stumbled upon the new dinosaur species. His family nicknamed the three-foot-long fossil Bambi because it was so small. The fossil itself is the skeleton of a baby that lived 75 million years ago. It belongs to a dinosaur family that most scientists believe are the ancestors of birds. Paleontologist John Ostrom first inspected the bones in 1995. The skeleton is a jewel, he says. I think it's one of the most valuable scientific specimens ever found in North America. Bambi Raptor had a long, stiff tail and long arms that could bend at the wrist. It may also have had feathers. Into the Dark Unknown. Louise Hose is a geologist and a speologist or caver. For the past few years, she has gone to Tapihualapa, Mexico, to map a cave. She and her fellow explorers found that it is full of animals that have adapted to life underground. There are vampire bats, spiders, and colorless fish and crabs in the cave's streams. They also discovered something more amazing, colonies of microscopic living creatures that can survive in extreme conditions. Even with poisonous air and with no light, these creatures thrive underground. The living colonies drip down like a runny nose. They contain sulfuric acid which can burn human skin. A photographer on the expedition named the slimy critters snotites. Meet a bona fide explorer. What does a paleontologist do next after she's discovered the largest and most complete Tyrannosaurus rex fossils ever found? As a little girl in Munster, Indiana, Sue Hendrickson always kept her eyes on the ground. I was really shy and always walked with my head down, she says, but my curiosity was strong. She often searched the ground for low-lying treasures. Hendrickson's interest in finding things turned into an exciting job. Now she is a field paleontologist. As a paleontologist, Hendrickson gets to spend a lot of her time exploring and digging. Her searches for new discoveries have taken her to countries around the world. Hendrickson became famous after making a gigantic discovery in August 1990. After a long day of digging in South Dakota, she stumbled upon one of the largest and most complete specimens of, of a T-Rex skeleton ever found. It was as if she was just waiting to be discovered, Hendrickson says. It took 67 million years, but we finally got to her. Finding the Fossil How did this fossil hunter discover this ancient natural wonder? It all started with a flat tire. While others from her digging team went to get the tire fixed, Hendrickson decided to explore a nearby cliff with her golden retriever, Gypsy. She walked around with her eyes to the ground as usual. Suddenly, she noticed a few pieces of bone. Then she looked up. She inspected the rocky cliffs above her head and saw three dinosaur backbones. 
she quickly headed back to the team to tell them about her exciting discovery. Over a period of three weeks, the paleontologist and her team were able to uncover the huge dinosaur fossil. The team decided to name the dino fossil Sue, after Hendrickson. How does Hendrickson feel about finding Sue? She is, I am certain, the greatest discovery I will ever make, she said. Diving for Treasure Hendrickson's adventurous spirit and curiosity about the past have taken her to extreme places to do her work. When she's not digging for bones, she's diving for sunken treasure. She has been working with a team in Egypt to find the palace of Cleopatra. The palace sank underwater during a 5th century earthquake. Sharing these finds with the world is the biggest thrill, says Hendrickson. Hendrickson also explored a 400-year-old sunken ship in the waters near the Philippines. The ship was called San Diego. It was a Spanish ship that was used for trade and battle. In 1600, the ship sank to the bottom of the South China Sea. Hendrickson was part of the team that helped make the San Diego famous again. In 2004, Hendrickson joined a team of divers in Egypt to find an ancient sunken city. She was also part of a dive in Cuba to explore a ship that sank in 1714. What advice does Hendrickson have for kids who want to get their fingers dirty? Spend some time volunteering out in the field with professionals, she recommends. And focus on school. It will equip you to learn on your own. Out on a limb. Rainforests are one of Earth's last frontiers. They are filled with plants and animals that are rarely, if ever, seen by humans. According to one estimate, more than one half of all life forms on Earth live in tropical rainforests. Some scientists believe there may be many millions more. Scientists are now focusing on the forest canopy. The canopy is the highest part of the forest. It is a network of leaves, vines, and branches that forms a world within a world. It functions differently from other parts of the forest because of its height and exposure to sunlight. This world has been difficult to study because of the great height of rainforest trees. New techniques and equipment are changing that. The canopy crane is one important example. The canopy crane is an ordinary construction crane equipped with a special platform. The crane lifts the platform above the treetops and then gently lowers it into the canopy. Scientists use the platform as a base of operations for their studies. One scientist described this experience as like landing on the moon. Scientists agree that there is much to learn about this unique place that is right here on Earth.